get out there and get something done. Well, it's that time. I gotta change the blade on this. I'm gonna get ready to cut this cedar log. So one thing I would suggest is learn how to fold these blades. It's pretty simple to do. They're just like any bandsaw blade. You can keep them in a full round if you want, but it's easier to transport them if you can get them into a smaller round. Then I usually put some wire ties on these just so they hold them together and they won't spring apart. They're easier to transport that way when you're getting them sharpened. As with anything else I do around here, just take your time to clean it up. You got it opened up, you're changing the blade. Just take your time, get it all cleaned up so it's nice and new in here again, and you won't regret it. It's a good time to get in here and inspect everything too. Make sure your rollers are still working good. Make sure these big wheels are rolling nicely. Get in here and clean everything up. It's a good time to inspect it all. And then on these rollers, I will take a little copper brush and clean these really well before I put my blade on. And there's no way of it slipping that way. So make sure you clean these really good on both sides. They're just like a something that you would drive your alternator with, a belt like that. So just make sure they're good and clean. Time to put the blade back on and get to work. Once your blade's back on and lined up the best you can, you're ready to put the tension back on it. On, these, on this wood miser, it's got like a urethane bushing and you just tighten this up for the tension. So I'll tighten it up just a little bit and then I'll give it one more check, make sure everything's where it needs to be, where the blade is. Make sure it's up against the back of your rollers. Make sure it's centered on both of the big wheels and then go ahead and get this tightened all the way up. Like I said, this is a little urethane bushing and you tighten it up to a certain tension. There's a little meter on the side of here where you kind of center it in the center. And that's all there is to this. Just like most everything else around here, this has got a home. <laughs> so I make sure it's always put back when I'm done with it. One more check of the blade, make sure everything's good. I'll close this up, ready to rock and roll.
Now, if you've got a manual machine, you didn't purchase it for production. So don't think this is going to be a fast thing. Not that you can't be productive on a manual machine, but you don't purchase a manual machine to cut a bunch of wood and make a bunch of money with it because you're not real productive. If you want something like that, you're gonna have to spend a lot more money and get with the hydraulics and everything like that. Even something with wheels that you can transport somewhere off site and do it, you'll be a lot more productive and you'll make a lot more money that way. This purchase was for me and the homestead. That's not to say that I won't help anybody because I'm cutting this log right now because the neighbor wants a Douglas fir cut. He's gonna bring it over. So I'm getting this off my mill so it's ready to go when he's ready to cut his. But I don't set this up to basically cut a bunch of wood to make a bunch of money. It's not what I purchased it for. So realize that when you're purchasing something like this, is it just for you? Is it something that you wanna to try to make some money on? So that would determine on how much you wanna invest in your investment. scrap pieces here I go ahead and cut them in lengths now if they've got enough material in them I will go ahead and stack them you'll see me stack them over here in the corner they'll sit here all summer I'll wait till the bark comes off of them and then I split all this up for kindling but most of this small stuff I go ahead and just burn because I like to keep my area as clean as possible that's why you'll see every time I'm running this mill most every time I'm gonna have that burn barrel going because I want to be able to clean up as I go that's the best way for me to take care of everything here.
After it's all cleaned and ready to go, time to get it stacked. So put stickers in between each one of these so it has airflow all the way around it. That's how these are going to dry really well. So I'll put some more stickers on here, but I'm running out quick. So I'll be able to put one more layer on here, but I'm going to have to make some more stickers real quick. Out of that one log, I end up getting 11 planks. They are one inch thick by seven inches wide by nine feet long. Right here, I'm just setting up to cut me a bunch of stickers real quick. I end up cutting these at seven eighths, so they're all the same. And I'll bring them over here and just cut them to the length I need real quick with my saw. Now, I don't have any rain coming for a while, so why am I tarping this? Well, you sure don't want any sunlight on this either. So these will be tarped all the time, whether it's rain, sun, or snow, doesn't matter. They'll be tarped. Leave the sides open so it gets good airflow. I gotta use my flashlight so you can see in there. A Dutch baby, huh? First one. It's looking like it's rising just right, though. <laughs> How is everybody tonight? Hope you're having a fantastic night, as always. Good, productive day today. You sang a lot of what I did. That's not all of what I did, but that's most of what I did today. I wanted to talk a little bit about the saw blades. Before I got the sawmill, I watched a couple of videos of other people that had sawmills. Most of them were complaining about how long the blades last. Didn't last them very long, they had to get them resharpened or buy new blades. They didn't think the investment was worth it for the wood they were getting for how many blades they went through. So I was a little concerned about that when I got it. The wood I cut here, most of the wood I cut on that mill is going to be pine. So just a ponderosa pine. I'll do varieties of stuff, but the main thing that goes across that mill is ponderosa pine. That whole structure that's over that mill that we built, that was cut with one blade. Part of the trick is when you're moving your logs around, roll them around, keep them off the ground. Don't get rocks and little pebbles and stuff in the bark unless you're going to strip the bark. Sometimes I'll strip the bark if it's easy enough to do and sometimes I won't. But I look over the log and make sure it's fairly clean. If I see any areas that are questionable, if I can get the bark off, I will. Otherwise, I'll just brush it with my brush. The more that you can keep the rocks and debris out of the bark, especially if you're going to cut through the bark, the longer that blade's going to last you. Let's talk about blades a little bit. If you're running a very low horsepower engine, a high performance blade is not going to do you any good whatsoever. So never spend that extra money on a high performance blade unless you're running 25 horsepower or more. You need the horsepower to run that because it's going to be at a 7 degree angle instead of a 10 degree angle. Um, it's made to run a lot faster, so don't waste your money on that if you're running a, a small engine like I am. Most all of your standard blades are out there are going to be a 9 to 10 degree. Any of your companies, whether it's Norwood or Wood Miser or any of the big companies, they're all going to be pretty standard that way on your standard blades. But realize that if you have a low-end mill or a low horsepower engine, just stick with those blades, they'll be fine. Now you can always send them back to the manufacturer and they'll resharpen them. I looked into a sharpener. Sharpener's reasonably priced, but for as many blades as I go through, I've had that mill for a year and a half and I've only been through six blades. Out of the six, two of them, one of them I hit a nail and one of them I hit one of my clamps. And for a year and a half, I've only been through six blades, four per se. Say five if you wanna take the two hits. I've only ran my blades long enough that I broke one. Most of the time, you'll notice when your blade's getting dull, it'll start getting a little wavy, it'll start getting a little tougher to push. And at that time, you might as well just change it. Don't push through it. Don't wait until it breaks. Why would we want to do that, right? Um, it shouldn't hurt anything in the machine, but why do it? It's a great big bang, and it can't, it can't help anything, right? So I do try to take it right to the edge the best I can without breaking. That's kind of the, what, what you're striving for, I should say. I haven't had a lot of problems with blades, so keep everything clean 
And then if you're doing hardwood, just go a little bit slower. Make sure you got a little bit more water involved in it so you don't generate as much heat or any smoke. Has it been a, a good investment for me? I would say by far a great investment for me, especially where I purchased this right before the lumber prices went up. So anything that I want to cut out there, most of the stuff you're going to see me cutting lately is going to be for the outdoor kitchen. Whether, whether it's the big beams or I'm cutting planks or I'm cutting flooring. You'll see me cutting a lot of wood here soon and most of that is all going to be for the outdoor kitchen. Some of it will be for the new woodshed, but most of it will be for the outdoor kitchen. Hope everybody's having a fantastic day and I'll talk to you again soon.